Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on the time you are watching. This video belongs to a series with an aim to educate the masses on the very basics of sustainability and its related topics, including their actions and impacts. No prior knowledge of any subject is required. Let us explore today's topic. GHGs is probably one of the most famous acronym with climate enthusiasts and sustainability professionals, which stands for greenhouse gases. But why is it called greenhouse gas? Supposedly, anything green should be considered good for the planet. But how greenhouse gases are, are bad or considered a threat? So first, let's see why are they called greenhouse gases. And for that, we need to learn what is a greenhouse and how does it work. A greenhouse is used to nourish plants, usually in a colder region. They need light and warmer temperatures, air, water, and nutrients to survive and grow. Greenhouse is made up of transparent or translucent glass that allows the light to come in, which is absorbed by the plants and the ground, and convert it to infrared energy, also known as heat. Once it is converted into heat energy, it has a different wavelength than the entering light energy. This new wavelength cannot escape from the greenhouse walls, making the air inside warmer and thus increase the temperature of the whole glass building. I'm sure your personal experience having this effect is when you park your car under sun for a while and open the door to find warm and crisp temperature inside. This is called greenhouse effect. There are different gases in the atmosphere and they share the same effect of absorbing heat to keep the earth temperature livable. Everything is not evil about greenhouse gases. Imagine GHGs acting like a blanket to insulate the earth. If GHGs do not trap heat, the earth's average temperature would fall to minus 18 degrees centigrade. That is too cold for life to sustain on earth. Some gases occur naturally in the atmosphere and some are man-made gases released during any manufacturing or industrial process. Some common GHGs are carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapors, sulfur hexafluoride, PFCs, HFCs. Although all are referred to as GHGs, they are different from each other based on two criteria. Their ability to absorb energy is the first, and second, how long they can stay in the atmosphere. The term GWP, or global warming potential, was developed to allow comparisons of the global warming impacts of different gases. Specifically, it is a measure of how much energy the emissions of one ton of a gas will absorb over a period of time relative to the emissions of one ton of carbon dioxide. CO2 by definition has a GWP of 1, regardless of the time period used, because it is the gas being used as the benchmark or reference. It stays in the climate for a very long time, like thousands of years. Methane or CH4 emitted today lasts about a decade on average, which is much less time than CO2, but it also absorbs much more energy than CO2. The net effect of the short lifetime and higher energy absorption is reflected in the GWP. Compared to CO2, methane has GWP of 27 to 30 over 100 years. For nitrous oxide, GWP is 273. For HFCs, PFCs, and sulfur hexafluoride, GWPs are as high as thousands or tens of thousands GWP. And this is the reason we see a small E place in the emissions written as CO2E. This is when the GWPs of all the relevant greenhouse gases are formulated as an effect of equivalent CO2 emissions for simplification purposes. I hope that GHG, GWP or CO2E terms are now well understood and we will discuss further how they contribute to climate change in a different video. Thank you for watching up to this point. If you want me to discuss any other topic related to this subject, please mention it in the comment and I will try my best to come up with a short video covering the basics. Have a good day.